Father, have his way. Amen. As the song said, we are gathered in his house in his name to worship him. And so uh, there is much to, uh, about worship. There's much about praise and prayer. And there's an order that comes in. But this, uh, this evening, Psalm chapter 100 said, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter to his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come before you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you, Lord, that your face shines upon us and your peace rests upon us and dwells with us. Lord, as we come before you together, together with fellow believers, Lord, we worship you in spirit and truth. Accept our praises and our thanksgivings as we honor you tonight. In Jesus' lovely name we do pray. Everybody say it. If you'd like to stand, stand up before this song, sing with us tonight. Amen.
Would you just go ahead and give him another hand clap of praise? Has he been good to you? Is he still being good to you? Is he still answering prayer? Oh, he's an awesome God. One more time, would you give him another hand clap of praise?
Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Hallelujah. He is a great, great God. We call the ushers to come at this time. We'll receive our deep and tithes and offerings. Thank you. It was part of worship. A lot of folk look at it as a piece of scene of the service, but it's not. It's part of worship. Amen. You know, as the Lord has blessed you and placed it into your hearts. Brother Bob, would you ask a blessing on the offering?
warm welcome for Pastor this week. Thank you. Hallelujah. I've got so much to thank you for. Stand with us, please, all over the place. Got several folks out for vacationing and whatnot. I'm glad you're here. Read with me this scripture after we pray the children's church can be dismissed. Good to have you with us this evening. Are you watching this evening on Facebook? Psalm 73, verse 26. Read it for me, please. My We've been looking how people fail. And we looked, I think it's last Wednesday, you blame your problems on the others, what we looked at. And that all started in the Garden of Eden with uh, <coughs> Sister Eve. Actually, Brother Adam, Sister Eve's the one done the failure. <coughs> Brother Adam had said, blamed it upon Eve and upon God too. <laughs> Second of all, we looked at this past Sunday night, we complain about everything. The Israelites was complaining in the wilderness for 40 years, and we can't say nothing about it, we complain. And in fact, I had folks raise their hand that had complained on that Sunday. Several hands went up in the place that had done, done some complaining. So we do that. Tonight, I want to look at this subject of how we fail is by not being grateful. By not being grateful. And I, I believe that we sometimes fail in that. It's a shame to get to Thanksgiving season and to be the only day that we say thanks for something. A shame for that. So let's go to Lord in prayer. Hold your hand this way. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you, Lord, for these that have gathered this evening. And these that are watching, I pray, God, that you'll be with us and help us. I pray, God, that you'll be with all the needs. Just got a text before church, sir, about some folks that need a special touch, and I pray you'll be with all the needs. God will give you the praise for it in Christ's name. And the church said, Amen. 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 Children's church can be dismissed. Not being grateful. How do we fail? And the youth can be dismissed. I'm sorry. The youth can be dismissed. Not being grateful. How do we fail? Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 and 2 says, This know also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful. That's what I'm going to look at tonight, unthankful. The last word was unholy there. An attitude in the last days here is unthankful. And I believe we are in here in the last days because of people being unthankful and all these uh, that are listed here. I believe that we are in a generation of being unthankful. Have you ever held the door for somebody that was going into the dollar store here in Bible? Maybe they were going in and maybe they were coming out or whatever, and you held the door for them and they gave you that. They didn't say thank you or as my mama used to say and Pam says it sometimes, they didn't say thank you, kiss my foot or nothing. So, uh, you know, as they went out, they gave you the snoot and kept on going. And it could be male or female that does it. It could even be kids that does it. Don't even say thank you or or anything like that. Maybe the waitress brings you your meal. You don't say thank you. Maybe maybe it's something like that. And Pastor, all these might be little things. Well, according to Scripture, they're not. Because I believe when we're unthankful, it grows into something else bigger and continues growing from that if we're ungrateful in things. Matter of fact, I, some of you's got your spouse with you tonight. Why don't you look at your spouse say, uh, Baby, I'm thankful for you. Will you do that? Well, that's the first time they've heard that in a long time, ain't it? That really opened up a door right there, amen. I'm thankful for you. Some of you is thinking it right now. I wish you hadn't made me do that. I'm thankful for you, amen. 
So I think we're living in that generation. I'm so glad that God is kind to the unthankful. Let me show you this in Scripture, Luke 6, 35. He said, but love ye your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great and you shall be the children of the highest. That's this, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. So the next time that person gives you that snoop when they go out the door, why don't you grab them and say, God's good to you. Did you know that? And walk on. No, don't do that. Amen. Just turn them over to the Lord and let it be because God is kind to the unthankful. Amen. Thank God he is because there's been times that I have been ungrateful. Don't look at me that way. There's times you've been ungrateful. You've taken things uh, for granted, if you will, and been ungrateful. Here's what a little bit I sent out today. Is being unthankful a symptom of a larger problem or larger problems? Do we lose sight of the fact that God made us and gives us everything we have, including the sunlight? Thank God for a beautiful week that it's been here Amen. in October. Amen. Do we lose sight that God gives us the sunlight for our face or the air to breathe? Do we lose all this sight of the of blessings that he gives us, of the extra blessings that, uh, that he gives us? Maybe we become what the world has become. Maybe we think that we're entitled to things. Sometimes the church thinks that we are entitled, if you will. That word's become big here lately, amen? Entitlement. And sometimes even in the church, we think we're in time. We think sometimes, oh, pastor, nothing's going to happen to us. We, we've done this and that, but, and we don't even take time to give God the thanks for the roof on our head and the food upon our table and the shoes upon our feet, the clothes upon our back. But pastor, these are not new. I think we ought to still thank him for it anyway. Amen. Of everything that he does for us, amen, and not take it as an entitlement. Well, it's going to be here tomorrow. <laughs> or it's going to be here next week, or it's going to be always be here. Yeah, we thought about that about uh, like in February when we thought we was going to continue coming to church as normal, and we took it as a granted that everything was going to keep lining in place, and it didn't. And we ought to be grateful for the time that we can gather together in God's house and be thankful for the family that we have and the family that we can come together with. Amen. We ought to be grateful for that. Listen, we ought to be grateful that we're still living in a free United States right now, that we even have the privilege that we can go out to vote. And to cast a vote, we ought to be grateful for things like that. We ought to be grateful that God uh, does things like that for us. Did you know that our founding people, our founding fathers, they chose to do the covenant with God. God gave Israel the covenant. But the United States, the founding fathers, chose to do the covenant with God. And God kept us on that and is keeping us up until this time. But we better watch out. We need to be grateful to God for what he has done. Amen. We need to be grateful to him because sometimes we take that, uh, I think, for granted. And we take it uh, that we're entitled. And when we get into entitlement, we get into a dangerous place. Amen. When we get into entitlement. God, Romans 1 21 says this, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither was thankful. Did you see this? Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. I believe we're here in this time and this day. Neither were thankful. They didn't do it. Matter of fact, the, we worship the creation and not the creator. A lot of folks are doing that, worshiping. That's what the scripture says, worshiping, worshiping the creation 
and not the Creator and not being thankful. And God wants us to be thankful. I think that last song they sung, I believe it's the last song, that when I get to heaven, let me kneel one more time just to thank you. Lord, I believe a lot of us is going to do that. I believe all folks that makes it to heaven is going to take time to kneel to God and just thankful. Can you imagine just getting across the threshold of heaven and making it in, just falling to your knees and throwing your hands up in the air and then, listen to this, and then getting in line to see Jesus. Amen. Because I believe it'll be a line that'll be backed up. Because when I get to him, church, and I need to go on, but when I get to him, you're going to have to wait just a little bit because I'm going to take my time in that and while I'm in line. So we're going to have to have patience then, but we will have patience then and wait on people. Can you imagine waiting in line and the Holy Ghost bumps running all over your body? And man, you're just standing there waiting to get in line to see you. Some of you might be saying, I'm going to see Mama first. Don't think so. I think you're going to wait in line to see Jesus. i got to say it this way. I'm not trying to be mean about it. But Mama's going to have to wait a little while. Amen. I'm going to have to get in line to see you. When you look at somebody, say, I'm going to get in line to see Jesus. Oh, I believe we'll be thankful to make it to heaven because it wasn't on our own merits that we got there. Thank God he didn't throw this piece of clay away. Well, my brother texted me back today. Thank God he didn't throw this piece of clay away. Listen, thank God that I'm still one of his. How many here can say that? Thank God that I'm still one of his. So in this last days and time, they glorify him and neither were thankful. What's the news? No, 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 what's the news? But if you were to watch the news, you'll find where God has come down in people's eyes. They no longer look at him as high and lifted up. They look for man to solve problems, not thankful for the things that they have. Matter of fact, can I tell you, when people buy something and their neighbors get something other else, they have to go and get in debt for something other else to be above their neighbor. If he's got a John Deere 22 horsepower zero turn, they've got to go out and get one that's a little bit bigger than that. If they've got a car just brand new and rolled out of the showroom and they show it to their neighbor, their neighbor comes back in the next day or two with a newer car that's rolled out of the showroom that's a little bit better than theirs. And we can keep competing with the Joneses and trying to get bigger and better and farther in debt and not thankful for the things that we have. I think it was sung here at my sister's funeral this old house is in ruins. I'm looking for a better house that's in heaven. I'm thankful for this house down here. I'm thankful for a roof. I'm thankful for a table when we sit at the table. I'm thankful for all this. Some of the stuff we might could get better. Some of the stuff you might could get better. You might could have better in some of the things. But I'm thankful for what God has done. My odometer on my vehicles, none of them is under 10,000 miles. Some of yours 
might be. God bless you. You keep driving, it'll go over. What are you going to do? Park it and look at it? I tell somebody to get something like that, I've got it to drive. Right. Amen. I'm going to be thankful for it. I'm thankful for my old 90 something model Chevrolet truck that's on the odometer of way over 200,000 miles. But the motor's not that. Right. Motor probably don't have 50,000 miles on it. Beat your heart out. Transmission might fall out of that motor keeps away in you. <laughs> so I'm thankful for it. That's why we should be. We should be thankful. That's right. We should be thankful for all that God has done for us. We should be thankful if we walked in with the fanciest clothes and blitz all county. Or maybe we should walk in also if we had hand me down. Let me explain hand-me-down to you that don't know what it is. Hand-me-down is not somebody that's up on the stop of a shelf in Walmart or a department store. They hand something down to you. That's not a hand-me-down. A hand-me-down has been worn by at least one other person and maybe more. Amen. And thankful for at least if it's a hand-me-down pair of shoes, they've already got them broke in for you. Amen. If it's something like that, I know, Pastor, I'm not doing that. Don't ever say that you won't do that. Amen. Don't ever say that you won't do that. Sometimes God humbles people and has them humbled. How many here knows this? Amen. Brother, look up now and say, thank you, God, for all that you've done for me. My mom used to go to yard sales when I was little. Man, I hated that. I'm telling you, I hated that with a passion. I said, I said Mom, somebody might see us here at these yard sales. And I hated it with a passion uh, back then. I, I could not stand it. Mom down there looking for this and find me something and, you know, bring it back. I ain't trying it on here. Just get it. And, and I look back at it now, you know what Mom was doing? She was taking care of me and clothing me with what she had, amen. And I'm thankful for it, amen. I'm thankful for it. Thank God for it. Thank God for all the food that was put out before us. I was saying something about this during the complaining time. That sometimes the kids nowadays get a choice of what they want to eat. And they can put in their orders to mom. And this is what I want. We didn't have that back in when I was growing up. It's whatever was served is what you eat. And be thankful for it. Matter of fact, and not only be thankful for it, can I have seconds? Yeah. Amen. And you gladly took it back then. How many knows what I'm talking about? And, you know, yeah, you wanted to be the first one there to the, somebody was making a joke there one time, they had the chicken set out. And the third family, how they grabbed the chicken was not with their hands. You know, most families, that's the way they grab it, with their hands. Oh, not my family, brother. We, we already, we've been practicing pre-COVID a long time ago. Uh, a lot of them grabbing the hand. This particular family grabbed it with forks. And there was one piece left. <laughs> Somebody rotated it a lot, brother Leon. <laughs> that's what he talks about, the chicken rotating. I know he wasn't rotating. I know what he was doing to it. And that one piece was left. And I guess somebody was looking over, trying to talk and grab that piece with their hand without looking, and pow, right in the back of the hand, with a fork right in the back of the hand. So I believe we ought to be thankful for all God has blessed us with. I mean, what he comes in. Amen. Thank God. I can remember fried bologna sandwiches. 
And if it wasn't for I, I'd put it on our coal. I'd remember it that way. You get tired of it that way, put it in the skillet and fry it. Let it bubble up and then turn it over to the other side. Put something on it, put some cheese on it, put an egg on it, and boil me an egg. I created that, maybe. Now they put it on hamburgers now. They think it's a, the greatest thing ever. Well, that's been going around for a long time. Thank God for it. We ought to be thankful for these, what we call small things. We ought to be thankful for even coming into a church that's cool when we need it and warm when we need it. Amen. When all the things is working. That's got lights in it. That's got comfortable seats in it. We ought to be grateful for it. Instead of complaining, we ought to be thankful for it. Amen. We ought to be thankful that we have folks that even come out to church. We ought to be thankful that we've got children in children's church and youth in the youth department. We ought to be thankful for this. Let me know this. Amen. We ought to be thankful. Thank God for it that we do. And I can tell you this. God help me if I'm not unthankful. David prayed. He said, forgive me of presumptuous sins. Forgive me of things that I don't even know about. Sometimes we might not be, we might be unthankful and not even realize it. Has your spouse or has somebody that's close to you that you've allowed to speak in your life tell you and correct you sometimes of the things that you're not doing? Have they ever done that for you? Have they ever spoke to you? Say, you're not doing this? Has your folks ever spoke to you? Say, you're not grateful. You're not being thankful about things. You ought to be thankful about what God has done. We ought to say, thank you, Lord. We ought to get up in the morning and say, this is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Like I said a while ago, it's been a beautiful day and a beautiful week. And had it been snowing, had it been raining, it's been a beautiful day and a beautiful week. Because God gives us rain when we need it and the snow when we need it. Now that the cold, bring, us, bring, the book, bring the book of Psalms. It tells about the hoar frost every now and then. I'm waiting to get up one morning and it'd be all frosted out, amen, and see the frost. Pastor, I don't want to see that like the springtime and the warm weather. Well, where we live at, we have it all. Amen. We might wake up in the morning and be uh, cold and the next morning be warm. We live in the great state of Tennessee. Matter of fact, we ought to be grateful that we live in the great state of Tennessee, amen. amen. We ought to be double grateful that we don't live in Alabama, thank God. Ain't God good? I just throw that in there. You can edit that. <laughs> Listen, we ought to bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. We ought to be grateful and thankful. Amen. Last year, go back to last year, 2019, Pastor. Don't remember that. Been a long time ago. Back to 2019. How many can think of the things that God done for you in 2019? Not 2020, 2019. God had been good to you, and God's still good to you now. And we need to be grateful and thankful. How many of you know this? We're going to be grateful and thankful for what God has done. Listen, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, it said, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks. For well, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Here's something to be grateful for. Listen to this. Luke 10, 20. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. Thank you, Lord. That's what more... 
important that we ought to be thankful for because our names is written in heaven. Amen. You know what I'd like to see? I'm serious with this. I must like see either of the presidential candidates take the podium and, and start it this way and say, before I say anything else and before I answer any questions, I just want to thank my Lord. Amen. Amen. Love to hear that. How many love to hear that? Love to hear that. I just want to thank my Lord. Listen, they would be writing about it. The media would blow it up. right? Yeah. They try to mess it up. I think that is more of a person that takes a stand for God whatever they're running for and takes a stand for God I'm going to do what I'm led by my God to do. Amen. And I just want to stand here and say I'm thankful to my God. I love to hear that. How many love to hear that? Yeah. Amen. That'd be awesome. Amen. That'd be awesome. We need to be grateful. I think it was Sister Tracy one time while the musicians were coming. I think it was Sister Tracy one time told me that I was talking to her on the phone and she told me she was just thankful for some of the little things. You know, if we just be thankful for the little things. I don't know, maybe we're waiting for God to do something magnificent so we can be grateful. I think we ought to be thankful for the little things. I think we ought to be grateful for a baby's cry. For a baby's touch. We ought to be grateful for these things. Sometimes we take them for granted. We ought to be grateful I've been here a little over 10 years. I can't. I haven't looked at it, but several people that done went on to their graduation from this church. We ought to be grateful that we were granted the opportunity to be in church with them. Mr. Barber's got a picture, Sister Brenda does, of the class back here in the seniors class. I'd say 70 some percent of them have gone in the last 10 years. We are to be grateful. I said this Sunday night. One day we're going to come to church for the last time. It's going to be our last time. Holy. Why we are to be grateful and thankful that we have that opportunity. These people in the nursing home would like to have opportunity to do this. These people sick and shut in. These people that are under the rest right now because of COVID that would like to be here. We are to be grateful and thankful that we're here. Stand with us, please, all.
band and they're going to sing. Let's pray. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you, Lord. And I'm thankful, Lord. I'm thankful, God, most of all, that my name is written in heaven. God, I'm thankful, Lord, that you're in control. God, I pray you'll minister to all these needs tonight. All of them, Lord, hands that went up in this place. God, I pray you'll minister. Those that are watching, God, I pray that you'll minister. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord, in Christ's name. And the church said, Sister Rita and Father Singer, would you come up and stand in there for some folks that Would you folks gather around her and get Thank you. 
to us. So good. Thank God. Thank God. Don't forget Sunday. Come out back out and be with us. God bless you. Keep looking up.